You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. Oh, hold up. Smell test. Go ahead. Sniff those pits. Now, your bits. Feet, toes, come on. Ugh. Could be fresher, right? It's all good. Old Spice Total Body Deodorant Spray is gentle enough to use all over your body, giving you 24-7 lasting freshness with daily use, from pits to toes and down below. So every smell test gets a... <sighs> Shop for Old Spice Total Body Deodorant. All right, everyone, thanks for joining us again on the Wisconsin Sports Heroics podcast on the Packernet Podcast Network. I'm here with my co-hosts, McQuaid Arnold, and we are going to be breaking down the Green Bay Packers 2022 schedule today. How are you doing, McQuaid? I'm doing good. I'm, uh, I'm stoked for this, uh, this schedule. I think that there's a lot of there's going to be a lot of uh, great, great games played this year. Yeah, yeah. They're just looking at that, there, there looks to be a ton of really exciting matchups. Obviously, you've got the Patriots, the Bills. Buccaneers um, games against the Super Bowl champion Rams, just a ton of ton of really fun, fun matchups as well as obviously the normal divisional stuff and uh, some other some other fun games in there as well. And the Packers first ever trip to London. Yep. Yep. That we got. And then and we got five prime time, uh, five prime time games tied for the most in the league. However, that does not include the London game or Christmas. So yeah. you got to figure that, that, I mean, really that they got seven, seven primetime games this year. It's just, you're going to wake up early that, that one, uh, that one Sunday for London game. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. So I figured we could touch on the preseason a little bit, just because I thought there were some interesting matchups there. So obviously the dates for those games aren't determined yet, but week one of preseason is going to be the 49ers. Week two is going to be the saints. And then week three is going to be the Kansas city chiefs. I thought it was interesting that the 49ers were in there. Cause normally I feel like, the, the Packers don't match up with someone with kind of a in-conference rival like the 49ers are. And so I think that's going to be interesting. I think it's going to be interesting to see how much uh, starters play, if at all. I don't think yeah. Aaron Rodgers played a single down last year, which I don't think was new. But um, And then also to see Jordan Love, you know, in those three games, if he can either A, you know, show us that he's going to be something in the future or B give other teams tape for a, a tr- possible trade candidate. Cause you know, that's got, that's gotta be on the minds of some people. So yeah, uh, Jordan Love is going to be watched a lot this preseason. Yeah, definitely. And there, there's some good tests for him, right? The, the 49ers and the saints both have pretty well coached defenses. And so it's going to be definitely something I'm going to be watching as well. Yep. All right. So moving into the regular season, which of course that's what everyone's looking forward to. Um, so week one, we've got the Minnesota Vikings on the road at us bank stadium on uh, September 11th at 1 25 PM central time. Uh, so that's going to be, that's going to be an interesting matchup because the, the Vikings, I think they have a lot of, a lot of change. They've had a lot of change over the off season, right? They've got a new coaching staff. Mike Zimmer's gone for the first time in a while. They've got some new faces, on defense, on offense, that sort of thing. Obviously, they still have Kirk Cousins. They still have Justin Jefferson. Still have Adam Thielen. So, what were your thoughts on this matchup, McQuaid? I think it's going to be uh, it's, this game might not mean much to, to be honest with you. Uh, the first game of the season, right? Um, I, I'll take that back. Shouldn't mean much, might not mean much at the beginning of the, of the year, right? Could mean right. much a lot at the at the end of the year when it comes to, to divisional and conference standings, but. Who these teams are in week one, uh, it's going to be a heck of a lot different than who they are in week 17 when they play again. Uh, but it's going to be a nice, nice uh, right out of the gate um, test to see that. I mean, Minnesota is supposed to be Green Bay's biggest competition to, to mm-hmm. division. So seeing that that week one uh, matchup right away is, is going to be um, a lot of matchups to watch for. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a tough test, right? They've they've got some new faces. The Vikings have some new faces in the secondary, but the Packers also have a bunch of new faces on offense, especially a wide receiver. And so, you know, will, will Aaron Rodgers be able to take advantage of some of the experience of some guys like Lewis Seen, the, those guys who have been drafted by the Vikings? It's going to be definitely definitely an interesting game, um, obviously. It's so the Vikings, a lot of Packers fans, that's their, their number one most oh. hated rival. Um, oh. I think that's, that's probably the case for me, but it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a fun opening game. Uh, I, the last time I think the Packers opened against the Vikings on the road, right. It was 2020 when they uh, scored a 40 burger on them. Yep. And I, I think this is the first time um, either, either ever, or just in a really long time that the Vikings have opened up a game 
or excuse me, the Packers have, have opened up the season on the road in Minnesota with fans. So it, it's going to yeah, be, that's uh, true. The, the crowd's going to be going to be wild. Nice. Yeah. All right. And then moving on to week two, that's the home opener, obviously at Lambeau field on September 18th against the Chicago bears it's going to be Sunday night football. I mean, prime time bears home opener. I mean, it doesn't, doesn't get much better than that as a Packers fan. No, not getting much better. And, and the Bears, uh, you know, their roster, I think they're going to be still fighting for that third spot in, in the division with yeah. Allen Robinson. Allen Robinson was, was a big loss for them. I know we took a big loss too with Devontae. <laughs> but we got Aaron Rodgers and, and they don't. I think that's what yeah. – and I, I think our defense is going to be lights out this year. I think we'll see that on, the, on display the first two weeks for sure, but especially that, that home opener against Chicago. Yeah, and I think that the Bears, they're either in a place where they're kind of rebuilding, right? So they're not necessarily trying to be super competitive for this year. Um, you know, obviously they're looking for the future, which is probably the smart thing to do with the way their roster was constructed uh, yeah. up to this point. Um, but still, it's they're probably not going to be a great team for this season. They're still a few years, a few years away. They're they're, they're going the right way. I think all all NFC North teams are doing uh, had a pretty good off season so far, and and they're all trending the right direction. But yeah, the Lions and Bears are both going to be fighting for that that third spot still. Yep, and then uh, moving on to week three, it's going to be a tough road game uh, with against the Buccaneers in Tampa, uh, 325 Central Time on September the 25th. Obviously, the Packers have not fared well either against the Buccaneers on the road or just in, in Florida in general the last couple of years, right? They got blown out week one last season. They got blown out against the Buccaneers in uh, Tampa the season before that. So this is going to be a tough game. I think that the though with the changes we've seen to the Packers defense, I think that they'll be able to perform better than they have in the past against uh, Tom Brady and the Bucks. I think that that uh, so I have five games, five games that are going to define the season this year or may define the season this year. And this is right. the first one. Uh, this is first of those five. I'll go through those four when we get to them. But um, yeah, this game is going to be huge for for down the line for conference ranking or conference standings. Um, even you know, obviously final record that the, the winner of this game could have the tiebreaker for the number one seed in, in the, in the NFC, if it, if it falls that way. Um, so a couple of huge games early in. The yeah. Game. Yeah. Obviously, like, like you said, this is a game that a lot of Packers fans are going to have circled. Um, I'm really interested to see how the Packers offense performs. I think, right. We said the defense, you know, they, they match up against the Bucks weapons a little bit better, obviously than when they had Kevin King and Shannon Sullivan out there starting in the NFC championship game. Yeah. Um, but on the offensive side, um, it's going to be a really real challenge, obviously, to protect Aaron Rodgers if Elton Jenkins isn't back and able to slot into that right tackle position, right? You might have Josh uh, Neiman in there. Um, we, we really don't know at this point who's going to be who's going to be starting there. Uh, but it is worth mentioning that the Bucs, they also lost some of their front seven, right? They didn't sign JPP, Jason Pierre-Paul. Yep. Uh, they didn't resign Ndamukong Sue. Um, they did draft some players, right? Like Logan Hall. I believe that they, they drafted an edge rusher in the first round of the year before that. So they have some reinforcements coming in there, but it may not be as tough of a matchup as we saw in uh, 2020. It's going to be um, uh, a, a totally different looking defense, right? And I think they lost an offensive lineman or two as well. Yeah, they did. Uh, They're a uh, right guard, I think. One yeah. of their guards. So they're going to, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be a two totally different teams. Um, it's going to be, you know, which veteran quarterback can lead the, the new roster, you know, to, to a win. I think that Green Bay's defense is going to, um, they'll have some, the, some matchups in, in this game that they'll be able to take advantage of, especially in that front seven. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I, I have a fairly good feeling about this game. I think that the Packers will be able to they'll they'll stand a good chance of pulling out a win. Yep. All right. And then ironically, right after we face Tom Brady, uh, we're gonna in week four, the Packers face the New England Patriots on October second at three twenty five PM Central Time at Lambeau Field. So this is gonna be another interesting matchup. Um I believe the last time they faced the Patriots was uh twenty eighteen. So, yeah, and I think the last time they played the Patriots at Lambeau was when Jordy had that that slam yeah. fifty yards for a touchdown. Um, yeah, I, th- I think he might be right there. So yeah, this is going to be this is going to be a fun game. Um, obviously, it's going to be an an afternoon game, a matchup between two great coaches. I mean, obviously, Bill Belichick is one of the best of all time, and Matt Lafleur is you know we've seen him have a lot of success over the last couple seasons. Um. Yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun matchup. I mean, Mac Jones is he he performed fairly well in his first season, and so it's gonna be interesting to see if he can kind of take that next step with you know what the what what is 
changed and stay the same on the New England Patriots offense. Um, yeah, this is going to be another one of those games, right, where you're going to be – it's going to be a prime time, a lot of eyes on it, uh, yeah. that, that type of game. The the Patriots feel like a team that you want to jump out uh, ahead on early. You know what I mean? Like like uh, right. get get a 10-0, 13-0, even 17-0 lead against the Patriots, and, and you've got uh, – you're in a really good position because Mac Jones, he, he's had a great rookie year. Um, he's got a bright future. You just don't think that he's going to be able to win a shootout with um, – you know, with Aaron Rodgers and making him throw it 50 times is going to yeah be able to do what we want. So of, of any of any game, you know what I mean? This is one where I would want to, to jump out to an early league because I think it'll uh, benefit Green Bay the most as far as who they're going up against. Yeah. And it may be an advantage, actually, to face the Patriots early in, earlier in the year, right? Because in the past, sometimes they've gotten hot towards the end of the year with, you know, that defense kind of coming on and starting to make some more plays. So it, it, might be, it might be better for the Packers to face them now rather than later on. Yep, yep. All right, moving on to week five, Packers London trip. Uh, it's going to be the New York Giants at 8.30 a.m. Central Time on October 9th at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Hope they said that right. Um, but, yeah, this is going to be it's going to be a really interesting one. Obviously, it's a long road trip for the Packers, obviously for the Giants as well, although I think it's a, it's a little bit shorter since they're closer. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's going to be really interesting how to see how they perform in a new environment. I don't think the giants are going to be particularly good this year. So it's probably, you know, a fairly good matchup considering, you know, with that long road trip. So it's nice to be able to face an opponent who's, you know, they, they have Daniel Jones starting at quarterback. Yeah. I think there was, it was, it was uh, the NFL did it intentionally to not lose a marquee matchup. Yeah. So kind, you know what I mean? Like giants Packers, it's still going to be a big game or, 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 you know, could anything happen any given Sunday, but you know, uh, Giants Packers Packers should be heavily, have, should be heavily favored, um, and then it's just going to be interesting to see the, the the Packers fans there, the following that 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 we see in the stadium during the game, and then uh, yeah, what I'm going to be most most anxious about or look or looking ahead to is is how when they travel there, how they get there, when they get back, you know, the, the travel time for this game is going to be massive for the following weeks, um, you know, a, a London trip. You know, I just I don't think you bounce back after one good night's sleep. So, um, it's the the travel for this game outside of the game itself. The travel for this game is going to be the, the the thing to focus on as far as how the team responds to it. Yeah, and and another good thing about this, you know, this kind of situation. Obviously, it's less than ideal to travel thousands of miles for a game, but another advantage. The following week, week six on October sixteenth, they're going to be facing the New York Jets at Lambeau Field, who are another team who. The the prospect of them being able to compete is is a little bit dubious coming into the season. Obviously, they made some additions in the draft. They had a bunch of draft picks, drafted some really nice players. But you know, can they compete in their in that division? Will it be a competitive game? It's going to be interesting to watch. Yep. Yeah, um. It's, it's Zach Wilson. Another year with Zach Wilson. They, they're, we're going to see Garrett Wilson, one of our uh, wide receivers that we wanted in this draft. Yeah. Uh, but it, the, 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 these are a few games where where you're coming off the the London trip. Um, the New York Jets aren't aren't you know they're not the that, that big Buccaneers so you have a game yeah. where where you 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 should win it right take advantage of it um and and don't let the London trip um come back to bite you you know six seven days later yeah and I think the nice thing about the, these kind of as this season starts to round like into the into that middle of the season I think that this is where the Packers new wide receivers are going to really start to click a little bit more, be able to contribute a little bit more. So it'll be, it'll be good. Hopefully if that, as long as that happens around that road trip, hopefully that'll help overcome some of the fatigue that that can cause. Yep. Yep. All right. Week seven, October 23rd at 12 PM central time. I don't, I don't remember if I told the time for the jets game, but that's 12 PM central as well. Um, the, against the week seven, uh, it's going to be against the Washington commanders FedEx field, uh, in Washington, DC, um, that's going to be another game, right? Where the, the quarterback's kind of a question, right? They've got Carson Wentz. He didn't, he's not performed well the last couple of years. Um, th- that whole team didn't perform well last year. And so this is going to be, you know, a- another, hopefully a-, a nice way to kind of get back into ease back into the schedule after that long road trip. So it's, it's, you know, I think that they green Bay or Matt LaFleur may have known the schedule a while ago. And that's why they requested that they still requested the buy later in the season because that's what yeah. they want. Um, but but you, you look at the schedule, week five, six, and seven is Giants, Jets, and then Commanders. You know what I mean? Those, those are all – and obviously the London trip is in there. 
Um, so that's, that's that, that. Those are those aren't three. There, there's no layup games in in the NFL. But if if, if they're anything close to it, those three would be it for for the Packers schedule. So to get them yeah. back to back to back um, sets them sets, sets themselves up. And then Washington Commanders is the that game is the uh, the start of their <clears throat> longest road trip of the of the season. So getting yeah. a couple wins before we get on the road to face the Commanders. Uh, and then getting a win on that first road trip against the commanders would be big for, for Green Bay going forward. Yeah, as you mentioned, that's the start of a, a long road stretch uh, after they face the commanders. Week eight, they're going to be traveling to New York to face the Buffalo Bills. It uh, looks like that's a Sunday night football game as well on October 30th. Obviously, that's going to be a marquee matchup, right? Josh Allen, Aaron Rodgers, Packers defense, Bills defense, right? It's going to be a lot of fun. That's going to be – this is so – of those five games, this is the second one that could define Green Bay season. This will be one marquee matchup, like you said. Uh, getting the, um, the 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 win here, right, could could solidify, you know, Green Bay uh, cementing themselves up near the top of the conference division, if not conference, this early in the, in the season. You know, week eight, you, if you're a 6-2, and 7-1, possibly even 8-0. I know that's, that's, that's wishful, wishful thinking for a lot of teams, but not out, out of the question – Getting a win here, I'll, along with that record, is really going to set Green, Green Bay up going forward with uh, um, the kind of, of, of competitive record you want at the end of the year to get that number one seed or at least a top seed. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's going to be a fun game. Um, week nine, they continue their road stretch against the Detroit Lions at Ford Field. That's going to be at 12 p.m. Central on November 6th. So that's going to be inter- an interesting game. I, th- I really like what the Lions have done. I-, I hate to say it, but I like what they've done in the draft over the past couple of years, right? It seems like Dan Campbell is building a good culture. So it's going to be it's going to be really interesting to see, you know, what the Lions look like uh, at this point in the season. And what's going to be really uh, intriguing is that this could be Jamison Williams' first game, or maybe his second game. You know, yeah, this, that's this, true. This, this is around the time where Jamison Williams can come in and, and, and contribute for Lions. Uh, and you know, Lions is the Lions remind me of, of Iowa from from uh, the college. They always <laughs> give the Badgers, you know, fits for whatever whatever reason it is. Lately, Green Bay going to Detroit has never been easy as of the last yeah. few years. So um, no longer are the Detroit Lions just a free win for the, just for, for the Packers, you know, they'll go three and 13, but you know, one of those ones will definitely be against the Packers. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, you're right. They, they had a great off season. I think they're, they're, they're training in the right direction. Um, but you know, they're still a few years away from being competitive. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously the, the main thing is they have Jared Goff at quarterback. So that's always going to give the Packers an advantage. Yep. I want to tell you guys real quick about our new sponsor factor factor makes delicious, ready to eat meals and they get sent right to your door. They have 35 different options every single week that you can choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. There's no prep work. There's no messing up six different bowls, mixing stuff. Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat. No prep, no cook, no cleanup. Factor is also very flexible with your schedule. You can get as much or as little as you need by choosing between 6 to 18 meals per week. You can also pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved. So head to factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 and use code packdaddy50 to get 50% off. That's code packdaddy50 at factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 to get 50% off. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news, so don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's Us Days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us Days at U.S. Cellular, exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. This podcast is brought to you by AT&T Fiber with AllFi. Something tells me that the guy watching sports for 13 hours straight on Sunday, who then stays up watching the recaps of those 13 hours, then calls his friends to talk about it, is definitely going to notice that half a second delay. Get AT&T Fiber with AllFi and watch sports any time of day from anywhere in your house. Live like a gagillionaire. Limited availability in select areas. Go to att.com slash hypergig to check eligibility. Coverage may require extenders at additional charge. This episode is brought to you by State Farm. 
You might say all kinds of stuff when things go wrong, but these are the words you really need to remember. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. They've got options to fit your unique insurance needs, meaning you can talk to your agent to choose the coverage you need, have coverage options to protect the things you value most, file a claim right on the State Farm mobile app, and even reach a real person when you need to talk to someone. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Um, okay, so moving on to week 10, we've got another afternoon game at 325 Central uh, Lambeau Field against the Dallas Cowboys. It's going to be on November 13th. So obviously that's going to be another big game, right? Mike McCarthy coming back into Lambeau or yeah, it's Lambeau. Um, Aaron Rodgers is it presumably going to be playing, right? The, the Cowboys had a lot of success last year, even though they got bounced out of the playoffs. Um, they're, they're, they showed off some really nice stuff, both on defense and offense. So it's going to, I think that'll be a tough game. Uh, yeah. So, so the, 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 the third game of my five that could define the Packers season is this one right here, not only for, for the, you know, the, the, the conference standings, but, but, uh, this could be a, a team that we are, are facing in conference. Yeah. You know, Dallas went 12 and five last year. They're, they're, mm-hmm. They have a good walk roster over, overall. And my McCarthy seems to have, picked back up his 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 coaching skills from you know 20 2009 to 2014 or 2016 whatever it was where he was very su- successful in green bay um so we, we be, even though we have yet to see postseason success for for mike mccarthy in dallas there's still going to be a tough out any game any uh given sunday especially during the during the regular season and by this we're going to know you know 10 weeks into the season we're going to know who's you know competing for that top spot or those top spots in the conference. And then this could be another battle of, of, you know, one and two seed, two and three seed going at each other. Yeah, definitely. It's just going to be another fun game. Uh, week 11, right after that, the Tennessee Titans are coming to Lambeau on November 17th. Uh, looks like that, or yeah, that's a Thursday game. So it's at five or seven fifteen central time. Sorry. I'm used to thinking in Pacific time, um, but yeah, that's going to be, that could be another tough game though. I think that the, the Titans future is a little bit more up in the air than some people might assume, right? They drafted Malik Willis. Um, Ryan Tannehill is getting older. They uh, traded away AJ Brown. So there, there's some stuff up in the air. It seems like they might be pivoting a little bit more to kind of some future plans moving past this, this, season in Titans football, if you will. Uh, I felt like last season when they earned the number one seed, that was kind of one of their last chances with, you know, the current, the current team to compete. So I'm going to be interested to see how they look at this point in the season. Uh, and, and, you know, Tennessee is going to be the, the, like you, you, you hit it right on the head, right? There, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, it, it, Ryan Tannehill's comments about Malik, Malik Willis and saying he's not, it's not his job to mentor him, all that stuff. We've heard that before, but I mean, you know, it, it's never good for the locker room. By this point in time, you know, and, and on top of that, Tennessee isn't built like Green Bay in the sense that they can lose, you know, the star wide receiver and be okay, I think. Yeah. I think they'll, be, they'll be a good team, but there is no way they're going to be competing for that number, number one seed. Uh, but Derrick Henry is still a monster. That defense just, just should still be okay. And Ryan Tannehill is still, still a serviceable quarterback. Right. Uh, so this is, a green, this is a game that Green Bay should win, especially that is in Green Bay. Um, mm-hmm. But it, it's going to be, you know, they still have some playmakers, so you have to come on your A game. And it's going to be, you know, Thursday Night Football, so short rest right after the uh, the big Cowboys game. You know, yeah. So, um, short rest and, and, and don't come out uh, lots of days ago. Yeah, and luckily they're both at Lambeau, so the, the travel isn't going to be something that's going to factor in. Um, yeah. And then, uh, so after the Titans game, week 12, the Packers are going to face the Philadelphia Eagles on the road in Philadelphia. That's November 27th. Looks like that is a uh, Sunday night football game as well. So that's going to be at 720 Central Standard Time. And that's going to, I think, going to be a tough matchup. The, the Eagles have really built a lot of, a lot of nice structure around Jalen Hurts. Obviously, his he's still a bit of a question, right? He had a fairly good rookie season, but there's still some still some doubts about his ability to be the starter long term. But obviously, they got AJ Brown, they've got Devontae Smith, they've got you know some really nice pieces on the defense. So I think this will be a, another tough game. There, there, this is going to be the game where where you know at this point in the season, the, the Eagles may be fighting for. I mean, a, either the, the division, if they if they are, are you know performing that well, if, if Jalen Hurts has that good of a year, but or B, you know, a wild card spot. I don't think that the Eagles are going to be a bad team this year. Um, so this is going to be another matchup between a couple of playoff teams that that are either vying for a, for a, uh, a ranking or vying for a spot in general in the playoffs. Um, and and you know, Green Bay is going to go into hostile Philly. Um, it's always fun. It's always fun going to Philly. That 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 crowd is 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 crazy. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how that one goes. 
Yeah, definitely. And that, uh, and then week 13, the Bears are uh, going to be playing the Packers at Soldier Field. Uh, it's going to be a 12 p.m. Central Time game. Uh, looks like some Sunday, December 4th. So obviously, like we mentioned, the Bears, they're not, they're not necessarily in the position to compete right now. Um, you know, obviously it's a road game, so that's still tough. But this is another game I think I expect the Packers to win. This should be uh, Lambeau Field South, right? That should be what yeah. it was called. But, yeah, this, this is one of those games where, where don't let the Bears derail your season or derail a streak that you're on. Go in there, take care of business, and get out. And uh, Aaron Rodgers has been better than anyone at that against the Bears over the last you know, 10 years or so. Yeah, and it's going to be especially interesting to watch because that's the game right before the bye week. And you, you worry a little bit about that being a trap game, even though it's on the road, right, against uh, – opponent that the Packers have had a lot of success recently against, you know, who probably won't be competing uh, for Super Bowl or a playoff spot at this point. So that's definitely something to be cautious about. Yep. Um, and that's, that's kind of the, with the bye week that, that kind of finishes up for what is probably the toughest stretch of the season, right? The, the seven game stretch from the Washington commanders game to the bears game. That's a uh, five of those seven games are going to be on the road. Obviously you've got matchups against the Eagles, the Cowboys, the bills, some really tough games in there. Um, so that that's going to be like you mentioned, there's some games that are, could really determine the course of the Packers season. That could be a, just a, a general stretch of games, a stretch of the season that determines how the, how the rest of the season looks. Yep. Those, those five to seven games are going to be extremely important for, for the Packers. And then, like you said, those those playoff matchups but also you know don't don't roll over against the lions don't come out right um uh, and then uh, same with the same thing with the commanders that starts of a, a road trip so that that road trip by, by week 14 by, by the packers by week if they're um you know you know there's a few losses of the season that's going to put them up for for a great uh, uh position to um uh, get a good seat in the, in the nfc yeah, definitely. And so the, that we mentioned that was the kind of the probably the toughest stretch of their season, you know, a fairly easy stretch. They have a fairly easy stretch to finish out the season. They've got in week 15, they've got the Los, Los Angeles Rams at Lambeau. Uh, week 16, they've got the Dolphins on the road. And then week 17 and 18, they've got two more home games against the Vikings and Lions, respectively. We've already kind of talked about the Vikings and Lions, right? I think that they, you know, they, the, their ability to compete at this at this point in their team building process is a little bit in, up in the air, though. I think the Vikings, you know, could definitely give the Packers a fight. Um, but week 15 against the Rams, that's kind of the marquee matchup of those four games, right? The defending Super Bowl champions come into Lambeau. Um, that's going to be, it looks like a, a Monday night game, uh, five or 715 Central Time, week 15 on December f- the 19th. So, yeah, what, what are your thoughts on that matchup? That's going to be – this is my fourth game, right, of the five that could define the Packers season. And, and this one, is, this is it right here. It doesn't get much bigger than two possible, you know, you know, teams vying for the number one seed or top seed in, in the NFC playing in week 15. The Rams have not won in Lambeau since 2006. We saw them um, lose just uh, last year in Lambeau. Yeah. A, a thriller, 36-28 to 28 win. Um, so, yeah, this is going to be a game where, where you know, the, it's going to be a marquee matchup top top uh teams in the conference going at it yeah yeah and that's that's gonna be it's gonna they're gonna be a tough team even you know assuming they don't re-sign odell i, I don't think they will right now with the, having them having signed Allen robinson but okay. still gonna be a tough matchup obviously cooper cup robert woods will probably be back they've got robinson they've got aaron donald Jalen ramsey so it's, it's a really you know a lot of stars on that team so it's gonna be a tough game but um, i'm looking forward to that uh, week 16, that's going to be Miami Dolphins, like I mentioned, at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Uh, it's going to be at 12 p.m. Central Time on December 25th. So the early Christmas game, I believe that's going to be the earliest one. Uh, that's going to be that. That's going to be another interesting one, right? They've got Tua at quarterback, but they've got a lot of weapons around him. You know, Tyree Kill, they traded for. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how the defense performs with Brian Flores now gone. So it's going to be another, another game. I'm going to be interested to see Christmas in Miami. You can't, can't, uh, <laughs> can't complain about that, but yeah, uh, the, the, the Packers are going to, um, go into this game and, and, you know, just coming off a, a, you know, great win or brutal loss against the Rams and, and, uh, have to keep that, the, 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 the positive momentum going, um, cause they've got two division games right after this to, to close out the season. So this is, a, you know, feels like a game uh green bay should win but again you know kind of reminds you of the eagles they got talent they got some stars here and there so don't come out 
and uh, lay an egg, go on there and take care of business. Yeah. And then, like you mentioned, the, the final weeks of the season, both are home games against divisional opponents. We kind of covered that already. Week 17 is going to be the Vikings at Lambeau, uh, January 1st at 325 Central Time. And it looks like week 18, I'm looking at the on the Packers website, it looks like the date for week 18 against the Detroit Lions, that has still that's still undetermined. So yeah. by, by, by then that the college football season will be over. So it'll be right. you know, Saturday or Sunday where they, they split it up. Right. Yeah. It's one of those games where they can change the time. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of the season. Um, was there anything like there are any big themes that kind of stuck out to you besides what we discussed? Yeah. That well, first that, that week 17 against the Vikings, that's the fifth game of the five that could define the Packers. Season. Look, I, I don't think that, that the Vikings are going to, you know, be um, in the running for, for the North. I think the Green Bay should lock it up, but this could be the week that they do lock it up, you know, against the Vikings week 17. And then on top of that, just another divisional game for, for your, your conference ranks, conference standings. Uh, but you never know if the Vikings have a great yeah. year, you know, this could be for, this could be a huge game for the division. Uh, but either way, it's going to be a huge, huge game for conference standings this late in the season. So um Taking care of business there on New Year's Day is going to be big. And then, you know, another conference game against the Lions, divisional game against the Lions the week later, um, like like always. But, but yeah, so so you mentioned a few things, right? A few takeaways from the um, from the schedule, right? Longest road streak, we talked about that. We've yeah. October 23rd to November 6th, right? Those three road games against the yeah. Commanders, Bills, and Lions. Um, we, 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 we only have two home games in a row, the longest home stretch we have all season is two in a row. And we have that twice. So there's going to be a lot of traveling going back and forth. Um, you know, there's not many long, long home stretches, like three or four games, but three of the last four games will be played at home. So that'll be nice. Mm-hmm. Two of the first three we played on the road. So, so you're going to start, start out the season yeah. um, on the road. Uh, and then there, there's, there's like things to think about as far as matchups that, that, that go, right. So the thing bills, right. The bills get a buy before they play the Packers. There's a little bit of an advantage that they get, right? Commanders play Thursday night football before the Packers, like the week before. So they're going to get an extra, you know, four or five days of rest right. before they play Green Bay. You know, Cowboys, they get a bye before the Packers. Um, there's going to be two games, the Dolphins and the Vikings. They're going to play Monday night football the week prior. So they're going to get uh, one day of extra rest, right? If that if that impacts the team very much or so. And then Green Bay will get an extra day of rest, Um to play or due to Thursday night football and that'll be when they play the Eagles. So they'll get, you know, a week and a half of rest before they play the Eagles. And then the Packers get a buy before they play the Rams. So the Green Bay gets some advantages in, in the, in the season, you know, um, but there's a lot of teams that are going to have advantage. They're coming off a buy, coming off a long break just to play the Packers. So um, that's going to definitely be a, an advantage that, that they don't have um, for a lot of the season. And then, the other takeaway that I saw was that Green Bay is at the, the biggest disadvantage when it comes to rest all season long. They got, right. um, I believe it was negative 13 days total for <laughs> um, rest compared to their opponents, right? According to yeah. ESPN, right? Green Bay's have the worst rest differential in the NFL. They're at negative 13 days, which means just, you know, like I just talked about the, the, the extra rest or the lack of extra rest that other teams didn't get compared to the Packers, you know, Green Bay is the worst in the division or excuse me, in the, in the league. Uh, the bills are, have the best at, at plus 13 days and the Lions come in at plus 11. So yeah, um, that's something to take away from the, you know, the strength of schedule benefits Green Bay this year, but, but to be honest, that, that's about it. There's going to be a lot of disadvantages this, this year. Yeah, definitely. I see it's going to be a tough schedule, but I think that the Packers, you know, they have the talent and the, the roster construction to win a lot of games here. I'm definitely going to be looking right how that defense performs with the new additions they've made, how the wide receivers can adjust, how quickly they can adjust. Right. Obviously, Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs, they're going to probably have to play a pretty big role this season for the offense to really you know, stay stay at the near the top of the league. Um, so I'm going to be really interested to see how quickly they adjust. That first stretch of the season, that's where I could kind of see where adding a veteran wide receiver, like maybe Julio Jones, could be helpful. But, yeah, it's, it's def- definitely something I'm going to be keeping an eye on. Yeah, I'm very excited to see. But, you know, but, but the, the, there's going to be a lot of rookies that we're going to be relying on this year, maybe more than most or maybe more than, than previous years. Like you mentioned, Romeo Dobbs and, and then obviously Christian Watson. Um, but it's going to be a lot, a lot of tests, a lot of tests th- this year. But it's going to be a lot of it's going to come against beatable opponents, you know. So mm-hmm. we should see Green Bay win some, win some, some games. Uh, but you know, not have a lot of rest doing it. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, McQuaid, did you have any other thoughts about the schedule? No, nope, that was it. 
All right. Sounds good. Well, thank you everyone for listening to the Wisconsin Sports Rx podcast on the Packernet Podcast Network. Uh, you can catch us most Sundays uh, on the Packernet Podcast Network. So thank you for listening and we'll be back soon.